as my colleague shared this morning, uh, the workshop that was supposed to happen at 3 p.m. Uh, is cancelled. However, instead of that one, our speakers, uh, Eric and Angel, will deliver the open Agile session that you can use to ask any Agile questions or share any topics um, that you would like to know more about. Okay, I think we're ready to hear our next presentation now. Hello everybody, you can hear me, right? Yeah. So my name is Yasmin Nahmedvashic and I'm here to present you our digital transformation and using DevOps transformation in BH Telecom as a form of case study. I just had an opportunity during the lunch to be a witness of a certain question where I heard somebody discussing about versions of iPhone. And somebody said, you remember iPhone 3? And I said, okay, I remember. Oh, that's history. And I was like, you, remember, you consider iPhone 3 to be a history? To me, history is World War II, Cleopatra, Turkish Empire, and so on. But they said, it's a history. So I said to them, okay, no problem. Please attend to my presentation today, and I will show you what I consider to be a history, and what history has taught us so far. So to begin with, we'll start a little bit about history and about our IT revolution. We would like to call it it's an evolution, but it's basically a revolution, because we re revolutionized how the IT performs within the BH Telecom. Uh, with our partner company Zilla. Then I'll show you our road to agility, where we are now, where we are headed to, what, what is expected uh, to be happening in a couple of years, and so on. How we approach DevOps and what we use in order for it to be a successful story at the end. So let's start a little bit by history. iPhone 3 is common sense for everybody else, but is there anybody here in the audience that can remember and tell me what UPAC is, technology-wise? No. So basically, in uh, 1981, Yugoslavia Republic formed a resolution for information systems, and it said that in order for Yugoslavia to achieve strategic goals, they need to develop a data transfer network. The first system called for, used for data transfer networks was called UPAC. The system was based on X25 protocol for transferring data within the network, and it was in a production in 1986. I had two years old. It was in a production in 1986 and it was a revolution. It was something big that Yugoslavia did and followed countries around it, followed it later on. But what this UPAC means to us? Just, you don't need to understand Bosnian language in order to understand this picture. This is, this is the price list of the services using X25 protocol. Take a look at the prices. Now take a look at the speeds. And this, somebody can consider also to be a history, but it happened only 20 years ago. Today, we don't have any more services within the BH Telecom price list services using X25 protocol. We shut them down in 2017. But that protocol is still alive. It's being used at the ATMs and credit card validations. In the same time as you were surfing using dial-up speeds, you all, you all remember that of speed. The Agile was born. This is also history, but it's not iPhone 3. It's also somebody that I think all of you remember. So this is also telling us something about this is also telling us something about the technology and the way technology is changing. And it's changing really, really fast. But we now consider it to be changing really fast. But take a look at this. If Agile was born in the same year that UPAC was very much popular in this region, the main reason why it was born, if you Google it, it's to solve the application development crisis. So the application development crisis in that time was the crisis because, do you remember the reason? The crisis because it took three years that the business puts a need and then the IT performs an application and fulfills the need using the IT. So time to market was three years. During that period of time, having time to market three years meant that business was really fast and technology did not follow. If you look at it today, we all also nowadays have that same challenge and the same problem. The business, for the, from the IT point of perspective, asks things and things for you to do faster than you can perform them. 
And you're always trying to find the solution how to be fast enough to fulfill the business needs. That's why agility is now more than ever popular. So basically, we started with this process. And uh, in a big picture, uh, just like any other company, BH Telecom has also been going through the three different phases. You have digitization phase. Well, basically, that means injecting, uh, injecting technology wherever you can. We passed that phase. Now we have the digitalization phase. The digitalization phase means turning interactions, communication, business functions, business models into something much more faster, much more agile, and much more digital. But the fact is that even today, we are now facing the new term. It's called digital transformation. What does digital transformation mean? It's a profound and accelerating transformation of business activity, processes, competencies, at the end, even culture. So we are here. We are currently here. You had a chance to hear a lecture before our, uh, from the colleague of the Raiffeisen Bank. This project that a colleague was mentioning, the ESP, actually represents one example of the digital transformation for the mobile payment system. So we decided we need to ramp things up. We need to change things, how we perform, how we, how we put things to the market, how fast we are, and need to transform our business and to fulfill their needs as fast as possible. So we took a hard look at the mirror and we said to ourselves, how long does it take for us to do a product to the market, to push the product to the market? We started with estimates between 9 and 12 months. We had products shorter time to market, we had products with a longer time to market. But basically, if you put an average time to market, we had it from the 9 to 12 months, and the business was not satisfied. So we said to ourselves, okay, we are going to do it drastically. We are going to say not months, we are going to not, not many months, not nine months, not six months, we are going to take weeks. So we are going to have a goal set for four weeks for time to market. And then we asked ourselves, how do we do it? Well, basically, we had two ways. One way was to do it all by the books. We could take a certain time, amount of time, discover, research, do the theory part, and see what others are doing. We had a period of time where we could read books, visit forums, exchange experiences, and so on. But we also did not have the time, on the other hand, because we were kind of running late on the, on the term. So we decided that the best way to do it is to pick the project that is for the IT, one of the core IT projects, the one project that is the most devoted to business, and transform that project, using that project to be an example of the change that you need to fulfill within the IT and the organization by itself. And how did we manage to make sure people do things that we wanted them to do? Well, basically, you don't. You don't have an option to do that. You have a technology as the driver, and you have people that are surrounded by technology and are enthusiastic about the technology, and then they follow. So that system that I was telling you all about is our CRM system, an order management system that has been in the production since 2009, one of our most successful projects in the recent decade. The system was very much, very much complicated system. The system was very much interacting with all the elements within the telecom and covering many, 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 many complicated processes. And we decided to make this system to kind of give it a new facelift, let's put it that way. Uh, we oriented ourselves towards the business and the business needs and market needs and what needs to be in the production and how, in what time. And we told the business, we are just going to update the CRM and you'll see the results. To get the point of view where, we're, where we were at at the time, and it was 2017, 2016, 2017, this was our current landscape. That our current landscape and the system that I'm talking about is this one here in this blue box. It's covering unified order management and common, common customer master. The system that was fully front-end developed by Oracle ADF 10G. It was integrated with other systems using soft fusion middleware uh, 10G, then later on 11G. It had WebLogic platform running on it. It had more than nine domains on, this, on the saw layer integrated with different, different domains, different business subjects. We also had more than 3,000 
OSB projects developed for integrating different parts of the system with the other different parts of the system, and it was supposed to fulfill the needs of the customers from the front end to web, SMS, USSD, and every other sales channel that was coming our way. The challenge was to change things in this region, and that changed to be an example for other regions within the landscape. So, in a theory-wise, in a theory-wise way, we decided to put a project timeline. Our project timeline estimated to be lasting one year, impacting five years. Uh, in the first year of the project, we would start in February 2017, and we would finish a year later on. We were all hyped up. We made a kickoff meeting. We invited everybody from the business point of view, from the business perspective, technology perspective, IT perspective, managers. We had stakeholders on our side. We had the board on our side. And we were ready to kick things off. Little did we know that we were going to phase and to find a different bombs on the way. Bombs that could explode and kind of push us to the wait period of time and to push us to doing things that we were not supposed to be doing. And the, one of the main challenges that we faced right away, even after just two months of the project, that was going to be Agile Transformation with BH Telecom, that the project that will bring continuous delivery, continuous integration, and you can see that we had a production two months just after two months of the project. Well, the problem was that we wanted to change using Agile terminology, using transformation that is Agile, also the culture of the people and the way the team was working around the project. The team was working around the project, but the fact that we maybe did not take so much seriously was that once you have the production after just two months, for the certain part of the system, that team and the people responsible for the system had to think two ways. You had, you had to be half of the day agile, and you need to think about the processes, continuous integration, and so on, and half of the day you need to be traditional all the way, because we had two parallel systems in the production. So basically, every day was like a joker day for you. You had one side of the, of the system that was smiling, and the other side that was kind of horrifying, because you needed to face both challenges at the same time. The same problem followed us even throughout the different phases, and then led us to have one year longer than we had initially planned. But we may, may reach the final goal. Our final goal, our final goal was the end of the project, and our final goal was the type of the services that would market would need and uh, that would business require to be timely and exactly time scheduled on uh, April 1st, 2019. It took us three weeks to develop all the postpaid plans that you currently see on the billboards called extra packages and to be, to be prepared for LTE or 4G network that was going to be public in the May of 2019. Those two challenges, we did not have a place with business to negotiate about the deadline, about time to market. We did not have that option. So we were kind of in a position that we, you need to show your agility and your business benefits right away. And we did. We managed to put something in a production that last three weeks. It took us only three weeks to push it to the production, have the first release, then continue releasing another product. But on April 1st, customers started to buy the new products, and it was a boom on the market. Later on, the LT and the 4G Plus network also continued to be a successful story based on this impact. On the technology point of view and the, how we change architecture, my colleague Edin from partner company Zira is going to drive you through. Hello, my name is Edin Hussein Efendi, I'm the DevOps engineer at Zira, and I will try to explain how we implement DevOps uh, at Zira and uh, completely production uh, production line between Zira and Beach Telecom. On the, this slide, we have finally product. So, requiring from a customer that they need uh, implementation anytime, anywhere, it's zero down time, so without impact on the, our consumers. And uh, it must be covered by DevOps uh, platform and high ability anytime, anywhere. So, on the, uh, I'm sure that you can see completely uh, slide, it's all microservices. So, we transform our product in BHD Telecom from the one monolith 
Monolith product to do to do microservice pro, uh, product. So first they asked me what does mean DevOps. So is DevOps developer operation or something in the middle? Who is left side? Who is right side? So sometimes I'm confused and DevOps is not human. The DevOps is not technology or job role. DevOps is mindset and DevOps is kind of culture. <coughs> Seem like HR. So this is culture. DevOps is everywhere around us. If you have morning coffee every day in the same time, it's kind of DevOps. And believe me, I consume coffee every day and uh, without coffee and be root on the production, it's a huge impact on the production. So we need DevOps. If you ask customer, what is mean DevOps? Do you, do you want to implement DevOps? Well, maybe, yes, no, I don't know. Because we decide to use DevOps, but what about customers who's never used DevOps? If we ask customers, what is DevOps? So especially if we ask operation, what is DevOps? It's DevOps for them like this. So, destroy everything. So, how to change mindset? How to teach people or learn how to implement something on the customer side? When we decide to use DevOps, DevOps is a huge stack. We need tools, we need to implement DevOps, but what? Each kind of digital transformation need people, need knowledge, need money. If you ask management, <laughs> do you want to implement DevOps? They will ask how much it costs. If you ask developers, do you need DevOps? No, it works. Why I have to change something here? If you like, if you ask uh, operation team, don't touch it, works. It's very difficult to change something because they don't know what is next. This is a huge step. Of course, we need people to know each of, of, of this picture. So what to use, finally, is our stack. At Zira and between Zira and Mir Telecom. I will, in, I will try in one minute, I will just explain meaning of this picture. So, we use Confluence, it's like a Microsoft Share Portal. So there is the document management and all our knowledge base is implemented in Confluence. Liffy is add-ons for Confluence, like for backgrounds. Jira is task manager. We manage all people by Jira, Jira management. Our management use Office and Project Manager for manage project. Communication between us employees or DH Telecom is based on the uh, Microsoft Teams and the Skype. From the developer side, our backends are based on the Java and fronted on Angular. With Gradle and uh, other tools for building, implemented in Node, Spring Boot uh, and other technologies. Uh, source uh, management uh, repository based on the GitLab. But when we start this project, Half of our application is implemented at SVM. So it's, it's taking time and also taking time to transfer all our project to new source control management. For testing, we use Docker, GMeter, and code validation is SonarQ. Same time from QA, we use Robust Framework and Selenium. Central point or heart of DevOps is Mr. Jenkins. This guy, British, I don't know. And he's, he's controlling all DevOps process. Uh, Solar type Nexus is a library repository. And on the BHD BH side, we have Dimiware, with Oracle, uh, Linux operating system based on the CentOS 7, and with uh, open source uh, services like Nginx, EJ Proxy, and completely uh, delivering the orchestration is uh, done by Ansible, Autorest is ticketing system, and our monitoring tools are Nagios, Color D, and Log Manager is uh, on the BHP side is uh, based on the, on the stack. So, 
In Beers Telecom, we have monolith applications, existing monolith applications. Our job is transfer to microservice. But what is different? Any, cha any changes on the, this monolith uh, application require restart. So we, we, can implement, uh, we can implement any feature every day, every second. It was on or every three months. So could you imagine what it means if you have to restart? For each restart, when we have to press button, first what we have to do, let's pray. So we don't know what's happening in the next 30 minutes. Next 30 minutes, actually for us is 30 years. It's a long time because we don't know what's happening. After restart, we have ticketing spam, phone rings, it's a mess. So we decide to convert monolith application to all base microservices. So now on, on the BH Telecom we have around the 30 microservices and multiple database. Database. So for start the implementation devops, we need environments. We can't, of course, we can't play games on the same environments. So now we have five environments. Two at the Zira side and and three on the BH side. Zira Dev development is place when we start to make baby. There is problems, always problem, is place where we create problems and, and place where we speak French language. This is something to start. After, when, when we deliver baby, we have to move to the next stage, kindergarten. Where is that? In Zira test. So in that place, she grew up, now we have to touch to teach about functional testing, about integrations, and how how stuff works. If it's ready, if this application ready, we are we are. It's time to move into primary school. But primary school is not at home, so it's another side. BH Telecom. Now it's different people there. Now they're looking our way. It's not her parents. So we have BH side to see how look that baby. What is that? So on the VHD side, they're testing our applications and functional testing and other kind of testing. Mm -hmm. And if they approve, we're moving to the next stage to VHD test. What is different between VHD test and production? Nothing ex except, except hardware sizing and data. But it's it's a very thin line between test and production because we have to switch from test to production, production without impact on the, on the consumers. So we have to pass five stages and each phase has looked back with monitoring tools to, to the beginning. This is Zira DevOps production line and also production line factory between Zira and uh, PhD Telecom. So we have our developers and they use GitLab or in from the beginning SVN. Now everything is on the GitLab. It's source code management. We are tracking, we have GitHub uh, hookup scripts. We are controlling how the uh, uh, rate of implement, uh, uh, rate to implementation of, 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 of of delivering, we, uh, there is script who is create uh, uh, reports and what and what we del deliver all the time. After GitLab, Jenkins is ready to start the process of DevOps by one click. It's very important to say because completely our uh, completely our DevOps line is based on the one click. So when we click, it must be done by one click. So. And when we start Jenkins, Jenkins pulling code and building our code to the library or, or, or to the microservice. All code validation is based on the Sonar Cube. And if we create a library, we deliver our library to the Nexus library repository, or we create RPM. Uh, VH Telecom uh, infrastructure is based on the RPM. Uh, Packages not on the docker or Kubernetes. So it's RPM based microservices. In process of building, 
In the same time, we have unit tests and other tests, functional tests, integrations that we are testing applications. And if we pass a test application, in, in, it is ready to for deployment. A deployment to back. So, if you remember, I spoke with five, five, uh, five uh, environments. Ansible is a tool for uh, mass orchestration to, to environments. By Ansible, we deliver, deliver uh, our microservice one of the, these uh, environments. Zira or BHT Sidebar VPN. It's at home. We have de de uh, developed an, an, a pre-test or test uh, environment. We are testing there. But if we decide that is a microservice application ready, we are on the Jenkins job. By one click, we decide let's deploy to do to do a remote side. But between the remote side and Zira's uh, remote and Zira's side, we have additional Jenkins. It's slave. This Jenkins is only uh, only for uh, delivering to the different environment because it's like jump post. So we don't see production or any any uh, any environment. This is central plate uh, which uh, triggered by master Jenkins. And after delivering RPM to the remote repository, we trigger Jenkins, uh, slave Jenkins, and that Jenkins starting installation and testing one of the three environments. In the same DevOps server, we have monitoring tools. And each phase is covered by monitoring loops and feedback to the to the beginning. I already explained so process of building uh, from building to delivery is git build code validation, finish code validation, code testing, deliver lib or microservice, sanity te testing, deliver to one of the of the environments, deployment, and finally monitoring, and very important in DevOps, look back to the lead. So we have continuous monitoring, and in the next slide I will explain why is important monitoring. So DevOps works, we are happy, BHD is healthy, it works. Next deployment, that is down. And where is problem? Who is guilty? Who oh, I know very strong because we have developers, we have management, we have QA, maybe in the server, maybe it's part operation, maybe it's network team. We don't know where is problem, but it's problem. It's a red alert. It's problem. If you remember the movie Charlie Chaplin, so it's product line, but who is guilty? How to find? In that process, we use monitoring tools. For us, monitoring tools is very important, and any system, any system, requires minimum three monitoring solutions. First one is Nagus. It can be any kind of monitoring, but we use Nagus. Nagus is monitoring tools, tool for checking something is up or down, yes or no, zero or one. Quality is for graphing. So if something happened, we need to graph. We must have to graph to see leaking memory because now it's only in real time something down at when and why. So it's very important for troubleshooting. Log analyzer, each our microservice delivery uh, and produce logs. So we're collecting logs and doing analyze logs by Spark. Most important in this part, after DevOps, completely DevOps line, on the right side, on the end of the process of delivering, we have monitoring. But monitoring is implemented on each phase, not only on production, each phase. So we have too many loops. All monitoring metrics, statistics, reporting is back to the, our monitoring, monitoring tools at home, and we analyze. We analyze, and we try to find what's happened, where is problem, how to remove problem, and, and solve all, all, all problems. Oh, what's happened? In the Nagus, with, uh, with uh, 
With monitoring tools, one of the most important things is that we can predict problem. How to predict? One example, if your memory leaks or leaking, uh, leaking uh, connections to the database, we can predict that in the next 25 days, application will down. It's very important and we can solve all problems before it become a problem. So, monitoring tools is part of the system and in our devops with Mr. Jenkins. And in any time, we know what's happened with our application. But we are talking about continuous something. Everything is continuous, continuous monitoring, continuous deployment. Why is it important continuous monitoring? Because today we have 100 megabytes data. Tomorrow we have one terabyte. It's not the same. Application going up. We have a lot of consumers. We have a high rate. We have to find what is impact on our applications, on our all our microservices, and finally impact on the business because we have to measure KPI. So if we see that something grow up, down, I don't know. So we must find problem before it becomes a real problem. So nine years is tool, usually for operations, we will see what's happening in the real time. Even after deployment, after restart. Because now just controlling a lot of checkpoints. But what is interesting now with NARIS? This is not only NARIS, it doesn't matter what kind of monitoring, but in our case is NARIS. Why is it important NARIS? When we speak with customers, if we ask, do we have monitoring? Yes, we have monitoring. Everywhere is monitoring. But when I look monitoring, in controlling only few things, CPU, RAM, LP check of, of server, that's it. It's problem. If you use monitoring tools, you must make good, good configurations. It's not that you have very expensive uh, monitoring, but you must know how to use. It's very important. Now, in the mon monitoring tools for uh, for uh, Zira, only 25 checkings on the clean install Linux server without anything, just by 25. Uh, but I have a few minutes. This is a picture of uh, one. This is not from production picture. This is the only explanation how one knows. We try to keep everything in, in, on the green. It must be green, which means we following green technology. Of course. So. It must be green. It's, it's, it's very important for operation team. It must be green because it's hundreds and hundreds checkings. It's impossible to check without monitoring. If we do any rest of any problem, we can find here. I said, now you heard of monitoring. Call it D. Call it D is old tool, and now new tools are Prometheus and Grafana. But we are still using Call it D because Call-ID doesn't require client server, uh, server applications, and each node is actually Call-ID. Why we use that method? Because if we lost communication between two servers, we either lost information from monitoring. Now, all data for monitoring is based on the host, and uh, when the connectivity back, I can see who create problems, node or, or, or network team. Troubleshooting with graphs, when we see behavior of application, we can see how look our application in next one month, and we have time to improve application before any problem. And finally, we have 27, 27 servers on the VSP side, 50, over 1,500 Nagus services, 200 servers on the Zira side. Because, why 200? Because we use a uh, service shareable between projects like Jenkins, like uh, Sanity Text, Gmeter uh, service. So it's shareable between other projects. We have over 50 uh, external integration. Data size is 1.2 terabyte. And users from over 1,500 offices. And concurrent users, 500. Maybe it's 500 nothing for some web applications, but we, we are talking about two heavy backends process behind front-end, so 500 is a really big number. 
And finally, what we need, what we need to bring to BHT Telecom, they are required. It must be zero time. Install anytime, anywhere without impact of production. Higher ability and always implement continuous delivery and continuous agile. Finally, it works. We can implement any feature in next few seconds. It's both sides, dev, developers, and ops are happy and drinking coffee together finally. And BHD Telecom is here happy and we are happy family. Thank you. <laughs> So at the end, at the end, the project started in 2016. It's now almost three years after its beginning, and it's coming. To, it came to an end in this year. But the the funny thing is that we need to. We are all IT engineers, and I can say that half of this room studied with me. So I can confirm say, confirm to say that without a question. But one thing is crucial for understand to understand as an IT engineers each. We need, in a, your career in the 21st century, we have a three-year period, and after that, we need to reinvent ourselves. Technology reinvents reinvent us, and that's the way that we need to follow. We, business has its own needs, it's fast, and we need to follow it. But as an IT engineers, every three years, we need to reinvent ourselves. We can say that with this project, within the last three years, we reinvented ourselves. But we are now moving that reinvention to the other aspects of the company and other aspects within the IT. Basically, for us, agility is the new currency in the business. Uh, we spoke about budgeting, we spoke about people, but basically the new currency for us and, talk, and the, the way we speak is now the agility. And the basic advantages that we see that helped us gain prospect and gain positive impact on, from this project are basically presented in this slide. So it's a reduced chance of the product failure because we have all the monitoring tools, we have uh, tools to check if the service is working, we have tools not to have downtime if the service is not working properly. We have improved flexibility and we have amazing support for following all the product lines. We have faster time to market. I told you a lot about these parameters. If we come down to the goal that the four weeks is our time to market right now, we are currently looking forward to keeping this goal uh, at the level of the four weeks. Better team efficiency is now formed within this team that is handling this project, but they need to be an example for every other aspect of the company. It's not possible to say that agility will be applied within the each IT system present in the telecom. No. For example, billing systems are not ready to be agile, not ready to, not ready to be this, this way DevOps oriented, but front end and something that is business oriented is. At the end, we have clear product vision within the team. And we have the product that our team and our business user, users, well, they are always somebody that is not happy and there is always somebody that is happy. We can say that the side of happy is bigger than the side of unhappy. And we are towards to make, and we are, our goal is to make everybody happy in that region. So at the end, we have the great return of the investment. And we had, in this summary, we had, uh, we have outlined what happened before, what is our um, next steps for the transforming the, the same.